The time under communism inspired hundreds of fascinating storylines, including some real cloak and dagger stuff. I want to investigate one such story, so I move discreetly through the city to meet a secret contact. This was the headquarters of communist Romania. Ceausescu gave his final speech right above those flags. As he was talking, dissent spread. People started yelling, the crowd suddenly becoming violently defiant. He fled from a helicopter on the roof and the revolution had begun. Nearby, I make contact with Mr. X. My secret contact brings me here, to the home of Irina Margarita Nistor, a place loaded with knickknacks, old furniture, and movies. Lots of movies. Which makes sense considering Irina has translated over 5,000 of them in her life. 3,000 of those secretly defying the prohibitions under communism. It was cold in the house. Uh, so from time to time we had no electricity. We were cutting electricity. You couldn't find food. It was rationalized, like after the war. So more or less you had too, too much time. And you have to do something with your time. So people were gathering to, to see these films. It was funny because uh, it was very expensive, so uh, VCR, so I mean the equipment or normal equipment, was the price of a car on that time. Of wow. That year. So it was extremely expensive. So officially, the population of Romania was just permitted to watch these two hours, two hours of programming. Two hours of Unofficially, your contact was smuggling in movies. Yes. From America, from Western uh, Europe. Yes, and I you were dubbing them. Yeah, that's for sure. Because there were the very few still traveling on that time because there were planes. The planes were supposed to have some pilots because you couldn't do that without having pilots. And they were usually bringing them, smuggling them in here. Which films do you feel were most influential on the public? Uh, you know, uh, for example, Bruce Lee. Uh, they discovered Bruce Lee 12 years after he died. Nobody knew in Romania that he died a long time ago. Uh, and I think that uh, was also the idea that somebody will come, uh, so, sort of... Some uh, hero will savior, come. Uh, more or less uh, a savior. And uh, deliver uh, them. A very, very violent savior, if possible, to deliver them, yes. So if Bruce Lee, mm -hmm. Jackie Chan, Steven Seagal, mm -hmm. and Van Damme mm -hmm. all got in a cage, yeah. who would walk out? Um, I think Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee would yeah, take them all? Yeah, that's all. Yeah, I, I yeah, agree with you. Yeah. I think he was the baddest of them all. Yeah, yeah. After our chat, Irina brings down some of her old diaries, packed with notes of all the films she translated. Six a day for years. And it's not just a job. This lady is a true blue cinephile. A success story of someone who ended up doing exactly what they love and wouldn't stop even under a dictator's prohibition. I'm not trying to make myself a heroine. That's why I'm, you know. But you're a but piece I, of history. Yeah, yeah, it was a chance, just a chance. And I, I'm glad that people were happy while, while listening to the films. And I wasn't a coward to say, no, I'm afraid I'm not going to do that. Courage. So, yeah. I like it, just like yeah. Bruce Lee. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's, uh, now I could talk movies all yeah, day, well, thanks a lot. I but I'll take no more of her story. time. You know, this meeting with Margarita got me thinking. Romania is actually a top filmmaking destination. 
First time I came here, they were rolling on Cold Mountain in Brashoff. Hollywood loves this place because it's cost efficient, you can find tons of professional crew, and you can make it look like anywhere in North America or Europe.